and today I'm going to be talking to you about synchronicity. So synchronicity, it's coincidence if you like, it's, it's coincidence but somehow it's coincidence that has a meaning. So why is synchronicity important and useful? Why should we think about synchronicity? Well, synchronicity can be really useful in helping you determine your path, whether you're on the path or whether you're diverting from the path. It can be useful to help you in making decisions, decisions about whether to do something or not. And I'll give you an example of, of, of that in a moment. It, from a hula perspective, synchronicity was really important because there was this idea that if things were going on in the outside world, the external, although on one level there is no external, hi Marilyn, then that reflected something on the internal, then there was meaning to be had. There was a whole discipline in, in Huna, the Lao Kahea. Now Lao Kahea was partly, Lao means medicine, it's one of the meanings of Lao anyway, um, so and Kahea means call. So the Lao Kahea were faith healers and actually that's the tradition that I teach but we, we're more psychological faith healers. We work with the, with the higher self to uh, bring about psychological and emotional healing. But the Lao Kahea also used Kilo Kilo which was the gift of prediction and divination. And one of the things, hi Nikki, one of the things that uh, the Kilo Kilo, the prediction and the divination uses, it uses signs, it uses symbols, and it uses synchronicities to help with predicting and divining a particular path. So in the tradition that I teach, the one of the, a few, good few generations back now, one of the people in, in the lineage was the Lao Kahea, the advisor to the to the king. And he advised King Kamehameha of the time when it was right to launch the ships that would bring the battles, that would bring the Hawaiian Islands together. So it's a very important piece in the Hawaiian tradition, and it's a very important piece for us moving along our path. Synchronicity as an idea, it's, it comes from Carl Jung. Carl Jung thought it was really important. He'd studied, I, I think Carl Jung is very cool. So he was a psychologist, a founding father of psychology, if you like. He, he worked with Freud um, and then trod his own path. Now Jung was interested in science, so Wolfgang Pauli, the um, quantum physicist, the physicist, was an extremely good friend of his. He, Einstein was a mate of his, so, so he hung around with some pretty, uh, some pretty high quality scientific dudes. But Jung was also interested in the occult and the metaphysical. And in the 1920s he studied the I Ching, which is a, a Taoist text. And from that he developed his theory of synchronicity, this idea that things happen that are either at the same time or that have a very close relationship may happen closely together and there is a meaning behind this and then really it's about what the meaning is that you make so one of the examples Jung gave was that so it, I love this story he um, he had a client who was very very rational very very logically minded and almost trapped inside her own head and I don't know about you, but I've definitely had times in my life where I've been so trapped about in my own head that, that I couldn't go anywhere with it. So she was trapped inside her own head and not uh, not inclined to, she, she wanted to, to explore and develop things, but she, she, she was just in here. And she came to Jung and she'd had a dream and she dreamt of a scarab be beetle, a sort of greeny coloured, be rather beautiful scarab beetle. And while they were in the session and Jung was struggling to figure some way to get her to step out of her logical self into, into her deeper self, there was a tapping at the window and Jung went to the window and it was an insect and it was a beetle and it was scarab looking and it was beautifully greeny coloured. And he handed it to his client and said, here, here is your scarab. And it broke open her whole trappedness inside her logical self. Now for Jung that was a great example of synchronicity 
And for me, it's a great example of how we can use our dreams, which I talked about in a previous video, the interpretation of dreams, how we can use dreams or dream interpretation to understand the synchronicities. So let's look at synchronicity, what it is in a little bit more detail. So really synchronicities, Jung talked about um, events that are related a causally. So there's not like an obvious reason. So you could say of COVID that there's an obvious reason there was a market and there was a insect that bit a bat and then it traveled and, and so on and so forth. Or somebody ate the bat. You can you can create you can identify a causal path. A happened and that meant B happened and that meant C happened and that meant we're all in lockdown. But there are things that happen that there is no obvious common cause to them that then when there is it, they seem linked, but there's no obvious common cause. That's when synchronicity comes. Now, you can interpret it as coincidence. And Jung was perfectly open to the idea that you could interpret them. Many things that they are just coincidence, but it's always worth looking for. Are they actually synchronicities? So I've had a couple recently. One great one was um, I, I be, there's a lovely lady called Annie Stoker, and I know that some of you who, who watch this video know Annie. And Annie had, it was running a mindfulness retreat, and it was supposed to happen in May. I couldn't go. I had something else on that weekend. COVID came along. Obviously, she, she couldn't run the retreat. She had to, to delay it. So it wasn't really in my universe interested I'm, i've done her mindfulness course but would like to go to the retreat not possible no. anyway come august i had arranged to go down to somerset with my partner to visit his uh ex-business partner who's like one of his best mates on the planet we'd seen them about a month before we'd gone and saw them when they first released lockdown in the uk so it wasn't like we hadn't seen them for ages we'd seen them recently so we were going down and Suddenly, Annie announces that she is going to run the retreat and she's going to be running it the weekend that we're going to Somerset. So my first reaction is, oh, I'm going to be away. Then I notice that it's going to be seven miles up the road from where I am going anyway in Somerset. So it's on the right date. It's seven miles up the road and it's something that I wanted to do and I couldn't do before. That for me is a really great example of synchronicity it's things coming together at the same time that somehow lead us down a path or down a direction so how can we really use these synchronicities how can we how can we make the most of them well one of the ways that we can make most of them as i say is to use dream interpretation if you interpret which i've talked about in the previous video if you want to find out how to do it then do go and have a look at that video but if we have these experiences, a set of experiences that that seem to have some relationship, but where did that relationship come from? Maybe do a dream interpretation on the synchronicity to get what the deeper meaning is for you. Is it something that you need to pay attention to, something that's going on in the outside or it seems to be going on outside you? but actually is mirroring something within you. So in the case of the mindfulness retreat, what was going on outside was there was this mindfulness retreat that was going on, but what was going on inside me was that I wanted to develop my own ability in, in the direction of mindfulness. I wanted to be more mindfulness. I wanted to, more mindful. I wanted to get to grips with this. So what was going on inside me was being reflected in what was going on outside. So, and this was a really, a really Jungian thing. When the inside, what's going on inside you is a real reflection of what's going on outside you or when what's going on outside you really in some way mirrors what's going on inside you. For the, for the kahunas, for, for, for the Hawaiians, this was so, so important because synchronicity, as I say, along with signs and symbols was an important part of Kilo Kilo of prediction and divination. So looking out, if you if you saw um, one of the examples I use when I'm talking about signs and symbols is uh, I was driving along uh, the road one day and I saw a red kite. Now this was in an area which previously never ever seen a red kite. They've multiplied in, in, in England uh, since they were they were reintroduced. 
but I'd never seen a, re a red kite in this particular area. And red kite for me is a real connection to my dad because when I was little, we lived in Wales. It was about the only place you could see red kites and my dad loved red kites and we'd go for a drive in the backwoods of Wales and I really do mean the backwoods of Wales. Wales has some backwoods. And you'd see a red kite and my father would be like, oh, it's a red kite. So for me, the red kite really symbolised my father. And seeing that red kite on that piece of road, which I never saw a red kite on before, was a sudden reminder to me, OK, I wonder if there's something about my dad or something that I, I haven't yet learnt from my dad that I need to tap into. And sure enough, there was. So these signs and symbols and synchronicities, they're all wrapped up together. So they're incredibly important in, in, in this interpretation. So this dream interpretation, there's this, how does this reflect something that's going on for me? And then there's just pure gut intuition. So I had a recent experience where, in fact, this, this last week, two clients quite separately have been talking to me about eyes, uh, eye challenges. Now, I haven't had a client come to me about eyes, I don't think ever. Um, although I'm very interested in eyes, obviously we all have them and um, hopefully we hopefully we have reasonable vision. But I've been wary. I was identified as very as short sighted when I was mm, four or five. By the time I was six, I was wearing eyeglasses, spectacles full time and I didn't like it, but I was, I was kind of stuck with it. So I've been wearing spectacles for a long time and about and then contact lenses. And then about 20 years ago, I started to investigate how I might improve my own vision. And I did it for a while and then I got lazy because actually <laughs> I have other challenges in life and I'm so used to wearing spectacles. It's such, a, it's such a part of my identity that in the end it didn't really seem that important. I haven't really thought about it. So these quite independently, two different people talking to me about problems either they've got with their own eyes or that uh, a, a child, uh, a child has got with their eyes. And suddenly it took me back into this whole story that I had investigated about 20 years ago into n natural vision healing um, and the work of people like Leo Anghart and Mia Schneider. Leo Anghart, sorry, and Mia Schneider. What was the intuition for me? Huh, maybe it's time for me to start redoing the eye exercises. Maybe it's time for me to get back into that because in the current situation, I don't know about you, but I'm using my eyes a lot. I'm on the screen a lot. So if I can then recapture some of that relaxation that the natural vision exercises bring to my eyes, I think that's probably beginning to be quite good for me and quite good for my eyes. That's an intuitive reaction to synchronicity so I think there's three, three main ways. There are probably more, but these are the three, three main ways that I use to benefit from synchronicity. As I say, interpreting them like a dream, so a dream interpretation. Um, asking the question, what does this trigger in me or what does this mean to me? Um, the third one then is just simply going with my gut, going with my intuition, because it can really help you move along the path identify possibilities along the path, identify things that you wouldn't otherwise thought of. So I hope that's been interesting. I hope it's been useful and be glad to see that some of you stuck around to, to the end. If you'd like help, if it's something, if synchronicities or signs and symbols, if, if this is an area which you would like some help with, then do get in touch. You can book an appointment on uh, secretartofhuna.com backslash diary and we can have a chat. It's a complimentary chat. Um, and if you want to talk about eyesight, then get in touch. Ella, you find it interesting. I'm glad. I'm really glad. Thank you. So, yes, I uh, look forward to hearing you. If you're in the UK and you're seeing this uh, on the day, enjoy the rest of your bank holiday. Enjoy your holiday. And I'll talk to you same back time, same back channel. I'll be here next week. So lots of love. Aloha nui. Take care. Bye bye.